Let's talk about some principal themes of Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart. The title of the novel nods to the destructive effects of European colonization, as well as to more general pressures put on a changing culture. Over the course of the novel, we see how things fall apart, both before and after the arrival of the missionaries. Culture and change are those key themes. The colonizers bring new religion, new justice, and new government, with little thought to how Igbo society functioned previously. The British assume arrogantly that they're bringing culture and enlightenment to primitive people. But the novel works hard to show a fully functioning Igbo society that includes elaborate belief systems, thriving agricultural, communal justice, and many other markings of well-established social organization. In parts one and two especially, we come to know a culture rich in celebration, ritual, music, dance, and storytelling. Changes come about rapidly when the white men and missionaries arrive. The impact is negligible at first, rumors, stories, but soon materializes into churches, schools, and new government institutions. The outcasts are the first to abandon Igbo tradition. To them, the cultural changes seem to offer new status and recognition, equalizing society. Okonkwo refuses to shift his beliefs and behaviors, particularly because the British do not see the Igbo as their equals. He falls apart literally in the end, his power and status reduced to suicide. Fate versus free will. In the Igbo religion, an individual's chi, or personal god, is said to predetermine that person's fate. A person's failures and successes are thus attributed to that person's chi. And yet this fate is not all powerful. As an Igbo proverb puts it, when a man says yes, his chi says yes also. This shows the belief that a person's will can influence their chi. Okonkwo works hard to become a wealthy, respected leader of the clan. With his drive to dissociate himself from his father, he's said to have overcome his chi. But when he accidentally kills Ezeudu's son and is forced into exile, he curses his fate. He now believes that fate, rather than his own drive, rules his destiny. Betrayal. Okonkwo believes the men of the clan should resist the incursions of the white man and use their warrior skills to drive the missionaries from their territory. In Okonkwo's eyes, the clan responds to these foreigners with passivity rather than strength. He sees the clan's acceptance of the missionaries as a betrayal of the clan's tradition and of their warlike ancestors. Although Ikemafuna's execution is demanded by the oracle and therefore an accepted part of Igbo tradition, Okonkwo's participation can be seen as a personal act of betrayal. Okonkwo helps kill the boy who called him father. Noye's departure from the clan makes Okonkwo wonder how any man could abandon the gods of his father. This, for Okonkwo, is the ultimate betrayal.